For this lesson, we'll be going over junction diodes. A junction diode is a two-electro semiconductor device that acts as a one-way conductor. In a sense, this is a uh, check valve of the electrical world. When current is flowing through the diode, it's in forward bias. If current is trying to flow the opposite direction, it acts as an open, and that would be our reverse current. Now, for this lesson, we'll be not really focusing on any of the Zener diodes or Tunnel di diodes. This will be mostly focusing on PN and junction diodes. Now, in some of your PE reference material, they have ideal diodes and then practical diodes. If you look at the two illustrations below, an ideal uh, diode acts as a perfect short or a perfect switch. So there'll be zero voltage drop across the diode. However, a majority of your circuits and a majority of your calculations, you most likely come across a practical diode setup, meaning there's a 0.7 volt voltage drop or a 0.3, based on what type of diode is. For silicon, it's 0.7. For germanium, it's 0.3. I also provide two equations to the right that has to do with thermal voltage and the current. However, we won't go in that too much for this lesson. We'll practice that in a few other uh, diode lessons later on. Now, diodes have multiple applications. One of the common applications is an AC to DC converter. And these AC to DC converters are known as rectifiers. So if you look below, I have three rectifiers, a half wave, a full wave, and a full wave bridge rectifier. And all three of those are taking a sine wave and converting that to a single positive uh, wave. So if you look on the right, a half wave is giving you half the semi uh, sine wave, whereas the full waves are taking both the negative part of the sine wave and the positive and putting it only on the positive side on the oscope. And after this, this is where they use a filter, and then you'll start getting a DC signal. Also, be aware, a half wave rectifier can also be used for an AM detector. Now, we'll we won't really go over this in this lesson, but we'll go over that in amplitude modulation and communications as far as the AM detector. Just be aware, it has, that is one of its many applications. Another diode use would be clipping and clamping circuits. Clipping circuits, also known as limiter circuits, are used to eliminate portions of an input signal. If you see in the illustration below, I have a sine wave, and it's going through a clipping circuit and then it's coming out with the portion, the negative portion of the sine wave clipped off. Now this is one of many clipping circuits. You can change them up in various different ways to clip or limit the type of signal it's going through. A lot of your PE reference material go through the different uh, orientations of this circuit. Another common one is a clamper circuit. This shifts the entire signal by a DC level. Now the, a good application or a good purpose for this circuit would be to move your input signal off the noise floor. Some cable companies even add five volts to their DC, uh, at a DC level of 50 volts to their uh, input signal to get those off the noise floor to minimize noise, to give you a cleaner signal on your end. So that be aware, this is another diode application. The most common application for diodes nowadays is lighting. Just about every household item or every type of lighting in your house nowadays is an LED light, which stands for a light emitting diode. Now LEDs work and function just like a normal diode. However, they just produce a light. Now be aware, you may see LEDs everywhere and not even know it. For example, billboards nowadays are illuminated with a bunch of LEDs and they can change various colors and tones based on the voltage or current flowing through those diodes. And we'll go over an example problem of kind of a way we can utilize the two-tone uh, LEDs. Now, in a previous slide, we went over the forward bias and the reverse bias. For this slide, we're going to address just the breakdown area of a diode. The maximum voltage that a diode can tolerate in the reverse current direction is known as the peak inverse voltage or the peak reverse voltage. They're considered the exact same thing, whether you're looking at questions or data sheets. So just be aware those two terms mean the exact same thing. Now, anytime the peak inverse voltage is exceeded, this creates an avalanche current. If you look in the illustration below, the red area is our peak reverse voltage area in which the avalanche current was uh, created. It's almost acting, it's almost like you're burning up the diode in a sense. Now the peak inverse voltage is typically in increments of 50. So in other words, 50, 100, 150, and so on. I even produced right here common diodes used in everyday uh, applications. And these are coming right off the data sheets. Uh, for example, 4001 has a peak inverse voltage of 50, 
4,002, 100, and so on and so on. So I'm just providing that as an example of something you would see on a data sheet. And we're going to go over one of these in a uh, example problem after this. All right, for our first problem, we're going to start with a relatively easy one. This is a very common one you'll see in some of your practice problems, but this will give you a chance to get your feet wet and understand how diodes work. So I have a very simple DC circuit to my right here with two resistors and one silicone diode. So we need to find the current for the diode and the voltage for the diode. And then once that's done, we need to simulate what if the diode was flipped around. All right, so number one, find the current and the voltage. Well, here's the one thing you got to know. Right now, just by looking at the voltage source, we know that current is flowing this direction. Okay? So we know current is doing that. Next, as we talked about in our previous slides, diodes are like check valves. They can be, they're similar to switches. They're either on or they're off. So if they're reverse bias, they're open. If they were four bias, they're acting as closed switches. However, in a practical world, based on the diode, it will eat or you can subtract a certain amount of voltage. So, as we talked about in a slide, SI is 0 0.7 volts and or silicone, and the germanium is 0 0.3 volts. Well, as stated here, this is a silicon diode, so it's going to eat 0 0.7 volts. So we know right away VD is 0 0.7 volts. But we still need to find the current the diode acts as a short, it acts as a very small power supply right here, or a voltage source, and the rest of it's just a short. However, it's very easy to determine the current for this uh, circuit. So the current, we'll just go ahead and find I right here. So I would equal V over R. Well, we know it's 12 volts minus 0 0.7 volts. Even though it acts as a short, it's going to subtract 0.7 volts based on the diode. Okay, and that's over the resistance. Well, since the 5K is in a sense not there, you have a 10K ohm resistance. Any times the short here, you act like that one's not there. Very simple. Well, plug and chug that one, our calculator is going to come out to be 1.13 milliamps. And that's the total current. However, we need to find the current flowing through the diode. We want this guy. Okay. So we're able to find total current. Now let's see if we find all the current. Well, even though this act is a short, there's still current flowing through the 5K ohm resistor. It's not a lot, but it's a little bit. Because the voltage at the diode is 0 0.7 volts. So that means there's 0 0.07 volts right there. Well, using simple Ohm's law, same thing. I equals, and this for the resistor, is 0.7 volts over 5K. And that's going to give us a value of 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4 amps, which is, which is 0.14 milliamps. Okay. Well, it's pretty simple. We have total current. And then we have the, then we have a portion of the current going through this particular branch right here. Now we're able to find ID. Well, ID is going to be, I'll say that's total right there. It's going to be your total current minus the current flowing through that one resistor. And that's going to give us 1.13 milliamps minus 0.14 milliamps. And that's a very simple calculator answer right there. 0.99 milliamps. And that's flowing down the diode in this direction. So that would be ID. Well, we have VD and ID. Very simple. That was number one. Number two, what if the diode was flipped? Number two is relatively easy. If you flip the diode in the opposite direction, you're going to create the diode in a reverse bias direction, which means there will not be any current flow in the opposite direction to act as an open switch. Well, if that's the case, then it's equivalent of this not even being here. This is an open. So you'd come up with a simple you know, series circuit of 12 volts in series with 10K ohm resistor and a 5K ohm resistor. 
and that's it. Because since the diode act is a open, that's what it looked like. And obviously the voltage here is very simple. It's going to be 12 times, and it's going to be 5K over 10K plus 5K. Plug, chug that in our calculator is going to give us 4 volts. And total current, uh, excuse me, yeah, total current is V over R. So it's 12 volts over 15K because that's total uh, resistance. 0.8 milliamps. If you flip the diode, this is the answer you would have. It almost acted as if the diode wasn't there at all. This is a pretty simple one. Just be aware of how the diode operates. That is one thing you got to be aware of when you're doing the calculations. Let's try another easy problem. What is the minimum peak inverse voltage rating for the diode shown? I have a simple 120 volt RMS voltage source with a diode and series with a resistor. Very simple. Now, I'm going over this just because you will see problems like this down the line and they will trip you up. Be aware of their simple pitfalls such as root mean square on diode circuits. Alright, peak inverse voltage is the max amount of voltage diode's going to see in the reverse direction. Now, most people would say, just by looking at this, oh, well, that's easy. If it's a 120 volt root mean square, all I have to do is pick C, 150 volts, and that'll cover it. That's not right, because root mean square is not the maximum amount of voltage you're going to get out of that uh, power source. The goal here is to find out the maximum amount of voltage that this diode's ever going to see. Well, since we have 120 volts RMS, we need to find the peak amount of voltage this power supply is going to produce. So to find peak voltage, it's going to be V peak equals voltage RMS, excuse me, voltage RMS divided by 0 0.707. It's pretty much the best crude way of determining that. And that will give an answer of 169.7 volts. And that's peak. So be aware of that. That is the maximum voltage this diode is going to see. So, going back to our question, what is the minimum peak inverse voltage? Well, we're going to need something that can withstand 170 volts relatively. So right there, answer is D. We need a diode rating of a minimum 200 volts. So answer is D. So this is a very easy problem. However, this has a simple pitfall I want to go over. All right, let's do one more problem. Now this is a classic one I've seen back in my college days, but it's one of my favorites, so I'd like to go over it. You're building a simple logic probe with parts you have in your toolbox. One of those parts is a two-tone LED, and it consists of colors red and white. The logic probe should display a green LED when you have a high input on your probe, and a red LED should light when you have a low input on your probe. Very simple, very simple circuit. So. What color needs to go on LED1 and LED2? This is all about understanding current flow with LEDs. So let's go ahead and simulate this real quick. Let's just say we have a low input, which is approximately 0 volts, and that's low, right here at your probe. Well, a low also simulates ground. So if you had a ground right there at your probe, that means voltage is going to take the path of the least resistance, which means we have 5 volts right here, and typically if this was left open like your probe was plugged in nowhere, your current would flow this direction. It would flow from the 5 volts all the way to the ground. However, it would have to go through a 100 ohm resistor and then another 100 ohm resistor just to get to that ground. But since it's open, that's the only path it can take. Now if it has a ground right here, it can go through one of these LEDs, very simple. Like I said, it acts as a check valve, and then it's going to take the path of least resistance. So, if I have a low right here, chance that current is going to flow through one of these resistors. So, I have 5 volts going to 100 ohms, and it's going to ground, which means current flow is this direction. And then, looking at the diode, the best way to determine forward BIOS, by the way, is look at the direction of the diode. Since it has an arrow pointing on it, that is the way current wants to flow for the check valve or for the direction forward BIOS. And then obviously, it's going to continue on this way, and then to ground. So, if we have a low input right here, 
we want that one to be our red out LED. Let's look at it from a high input standpoint. Let's go ahead and put five volts on your probe. In other words, you hit a spot that, or a high point on one of your logic circuits and you want to determine how the current's going to flow. So again, as we talked about earlier, you have five volts here and it's going through two resistors. Well, current's going to want to flow in the path of least resistance. So if you have five volts here, it only has to go through one of your diodes, and then it's only going through one resistor. Instead of two, it's going to go through one. So it's not going to go up to the five volt power supply. It's going to go down this direction because you only have one resistor. So it's going to go this direction, and then like we talked about, it's going to go through our LED or our check valve, and then down to ground because it's only going through one resistor. So since we know current flow direction and the path of least resistance, LED1 will be green. So if you want to construct a very simple logic probe, you can do it with this simple setup. I know this is a very simple circuit, however, it, this is we're just going over the fundamentals of diodes and how they work, and that way you understand how, how to do these calculations later on when you do the bigger circuits. In later videos, we'll go over more functions of a diode, such as Zener diodes, but for now, this is just a fundamental get your feet wet and make you dangerous. Thank you, and have a nice day.